Hey guys, it's Paul here from ImpulsiveCulinary.com and in this video, I'm going to talk to you about what is soon to become your brand new favorite lunch meal. This is my favorite roasted Cajun chicken breast recipe. So lunch meats, especially for families with kids. This is it's like an essential thing. You're packing sandwiches in a lunchbox every day of the week. And it breaks my heart when I walk into the grocery store and I see in the cold cut section and there's these beautiful, you know, black forest ham and roasted turkey breast and all that. But the price, ah, you could lose your mind. Per hundred grams even, it's not even per pound. So if you want to try and find a, a cost-effective alternative, Get your chicken breasts when they're on sale, preferably organic, but I understand if you can't, it's not always a possibility. But take your chicken breasts and do them this way in the recipe that I'm going to show you today, and I promise you, you're never going to pay too much for roasted chicken breast again. Okay, so here's what you need. The recipe that I'm going to show you today uses two large boneless chicken breasts, preferably organic if you can find. Um, the spice mix that you're going to put together is two tablespoons of olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, two tablespoons of white wine, one tablespoon of paprika, not the spicy smoked stuff, just regular paprika, one teaspoon of kosher salt, one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of Cajun spice. There's a lot of different varieties of Cajun spice. Try and get one that's a little bit on the mild side, especially for kids. One teaspoon of sugar. Uh, we use golden cane sugar, but if you can tolerate uh, white refined sugar, that's fine. And a half a teaspoon of ground black pepper. Okay, let's go make some amazing chicken breasts. Roasted chicken breast day. Let's save some money, all right? So the first thing you want to do is preheat your oven to 375. Next, we're going to prepare our roasting dish. So get yourself any kind of baking dish. You can use a cookie sheet, you can use a roasting pan with sides, whatever you like. Something that's big enough to put two chicken breasts on. Next, you want to line your baking sheet with some tin foil. It doesn't have to be pretty. This is really just to protect the pan. <laughs> so you don't have to clean it when you're done. Okay, just place it in the bottom is fine. So when we're roasting these chicken breasts, we want them to cook all around, even from the bottom, without having the chicken breasts touch the pan. So I use a cooling rack. So it just raises it up a little bit, like a quarter of an inch, uh, and that just put it right on top of the baking sheet. So the main ingredient, of course, chicken breasts. Uh, I got a couple of organic chicken breasts here that I'm going to trim off any excess fat and just clean them up, making sure they look nice. Okay, so here's my two beautiful, deboned, de-skinned, de-everything chicken breasts, ready for a rub and to be roasted. Okay, so now that my chicken breasts are trimmed and cleaned up and ready to go, I want to get a shallow bowl. This is great to be uh, able to sort of mix the rub in, but also to use to just slather the chicken breasts. In a deep bowl, it's kind of hard to get all of the sides. So uh, put all of your ingredients, the oil, the wine, and the dry rub, and put it in here and mix it together. Oil and wine. Spice mixture. Okay, get a spoon and mix it up. All right, so once you've mixed your spices and your oil and your wine together, you should get a really lovely paste just around this consistency, okay? So if you've eyeballed your measurements and it's a little bit too thick, you can always just add a little bit of wine or oil. Um, and conversely, if it's too watery, you want to maybe top up with a little bit of paprika. That'll thicken it up really quickly. Okay, so let's slather the chicken breast. Okay, get your hands dirty. So don't be shy. Generously coat your chicken breasts with as much of this amazing flavor-packed rub as you can. Okay, don't leave any rub in the bowl. Make sure you coat those chicken breasts with every last drop of that flavor-packed rub. Um, so they should be covered and coated on both sides. Put the chicken breasts on that nice cooling rack inside your roasting pan, and let's get that in the oven to cook. Okay, so you want to roast these chicken breasts in the center rack of your 375 degree oven for, start with 30 minutes. 30 minute timer, go! Now the reason I suggest 30 minutes, it can vary greatly depending on the size of the chicken breasts that you've got. If you've uh, bought organic at great expense, but you can only afford really tiny chicken breasts, the cooking time is going to go down, around 20 minutes. Uh, if you've got normal size or even larger uh, chicken breasts that you're putting in there, 30 minutes at bare minimum. The way to know for sure is to use an instant read thermometer. You have to get one of these guys, especially when chicken is involved. You don't want to take any chances serving undercooked chicken to, to your guests or your family. So you want to use the instant read thermometer and get the internal temperature of those breasts to at least 150, 155. 
When I cook these and I get them to 150, I take them out and I cover them in another sheet of tin foil like you're going to see later and I let them finish cooking outside of the oven. But it's very important, make sure no less than 150. This is literally the easiest recipe in the world. I'm like almost done. Starting to smell pretty good in this kitchen. Here we go. Okay. 30 minutes. We're not taking them out yet, but we're going to check the temperature inside with an instant read thermometer. So it's starting to slow down at around 147, 148. So you know what, just to be safe, I'm going to leave it in another five minutes because you don't take a chance with chicken. Okay, so I'm going to give it another five minutes just to be sure. Chicken, poultry, turkey, you don't want to mess around. Never take a chance. You're not taking it out of the oven unless it's gotten to at least 150 degrees or more internal temperature. The goal is to let it rest underneath a tinfoil tent and still cook and stew in its juices for a little bit to get it, nudge it up to that 160. That's the magic temperature where it's safe to eat your chicken. Uh, so let's just see it in five minutes, see what happens. Okay, so while the chicken is finishing up at its last five minutes in the oven, you want to get a cutting board that's got this nice little drip edge to be able to catch all the juices. That is magic stuff. They say the weeding is the hardest part. I'm impulsive, damn it! Okay, another five minutes is done. Let's take these out and see what they're like. Okay, so I've checked the temperature. They're nice and safe, well into the 160s. And now I've transferred them over to my cutting board. I'm gonna let these rest. I'm gonna cover them up with a little bit of parchment paper. I don't like tin foil coming directly into contact with my food. Call me crazy. But I'm gonna put another tin foil on top of this and let them rest for around 10, 15 minutes. I can't wait 15 minutes. I have gotta cut these up now and I wanna try a piece. So let's get on it. So even after five minutes, I've tilted the cutting board a little bit to show you this. This is flavor right here. Magic. Total magic flavor. And when I slice it up and put it in an airtight container to refrigerate for the week, they're going to be soaking in that lovely flavorful juice. Really tasty stuff. Let's cut it up. So of course the advantage is you can slice it as thick or as thin as you like. Get a really sharp knife and go at it. Oh, the juices coming out of this are fantastic. So there you have it guys. Delicious Cajun roasted chicken breast. This is so good. You can't mistake it as being one of the most flavorful lunch meats you're ever going to try. So there you have it guys. That's my roasted Cajun chicken breast recipe. I hope you've enjoyed the video and guys this is purely addictive stuff. You don't have to slice it up. Serve it as a main. Put a whole breast on a plate and watch your guests come running back for more the next time that you're having dinner. Folks, my name is Paul from ImpulsiveCulinarian.com. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to subscribe. One video every week. More if I can swing it. I'll catch you in the next video. So good.